of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And with your spirit. In the Gospel, the Lord invites us not to respond from the perspective and the realm of law, but from the realm of love. Law has got its own limitations. Love transcends law. For the times we have failed to live our lives from what's God's expectation of us, we have failed in love of God and our neighbor. Let us be sorry and ask the Lord pardon and grace. Acknowledging our shortcomings, we pray, I confess to, to Almighty God, God and, and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in, in my thoughts and in my words, in what, what I have done and in what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. And therefore, I ask, Blessed Mary, ever Virgin, all the angels and saints, and to you, my brothers and sisters, to pray, to pray for, for me to the Lord, Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Lord have mercy. Lord have mercy. Christ have mercy. Christ have mercy. Lord have mercy. Lord have mercy. Let us pray. Let's also pray for our personal intentions and for all those who have asked our prayers. O God, strength of those who hope in you, graciously hear our pleas, and since without you mortal frailty can do nothing, grant us always the help of your grace, that in following your commands we may please you by our resolve and our deeds. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the second letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. Brethren, working together with Christ, we appeal to you not to receive the grace of God in vain. For he says, In a favorable time I listened to you, and in a day of salvation I have helped you. Behold, now is the favorable time. Behold, now is the day of salvation. We put no obstacle in anyone's way, so that no fault may be found with our ministry. But as servants of God, we commend ourselves in every way, by great endurance, in afflictions, hardships, calamities, beatings, imprisonments, riots, labors, sleepless nights, hunger, by purity, 
knowledge, patience, kindness, the Holy Spirit, genuine love, by truthful speech and the power of God, with the weapons of righteousness for the right hand and for the left, through honor and dishonor, through slander and praise. We are treated as impostors and yet are true, as unknown and yet well known, as dying and behold we live, as punished and yet not killed, as sorrowful yet always rejoicing, as poor yet making many rich, as having nothing yet possessing everything. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Your response. The Lord has made known his salvation. The, the Lord, Lord has made known his salvation. O oh, sing a new song to the Lord, for he has worked wonders. His right hand and his holy arm have brought salvation. The, the Lord, Lord has, has made, made known his, his salvation. salvation. The Lord has made known his salvation, has shown his deliverance to the nations. He has remembered his merciful love and his truth for the house of Israel. The, the Lord, Lord has made known his salvation. All the ends of the earth have seen the salvation of our God. Shout to the Lord all the earth, break forth into joyous song and sing out your praise. The Lord, the Lord has, has made, made known, known his salvation. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. Your word is a lamp for my feet and a light for my path. Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. The Lord be with you and with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Glory to you, O Lord. At that time, Jesus said to his disciples, you have heard that it was said, an eye for an eye and a tooth for a tooth. But I say to you, do not resist the one who is evil. But if anyone slaps you on the right cheek, turn to him the other also. And if anyone would sue you and take your tunic, let him have your cloak as well. And if anyone forces you to go one mile, go with him two miles. Give to the one who begs from you and do not refuse the one who would borrow from you. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Dear brethren, we continue our reflections on the Sermon on the Mount. And the gospel verses that we have just heard are one of the most difficult part, difficult parts of the Sermon on the Mount that God the Lord wants us to obey. Jesus commands us to these few verses to practice radical love over revenge. It's hard for us because when we are offended, when people hurt us, we would like to have our revenge. Today we reflect on just one verse of the gospel passage that we have heard. Verse 41. If anyone forces you to go one mile, go with him two miles. This phrase has got roots in first century Palestine. Romans had conquered almost the known world and they ruled with an iron hand. So the Romans had a law 
and according to this law the roman soldier could stop a jew on the way and force him and compel the jew to carry his backpack his luggage his armor which was sometimes 40 to 50 kgs they say now sometimes the romans roman soldiers would force the jews to carry their backpack their armor because it was heavy for them and therefore they would require their help somebody's help sometimes it could be just because the soldier was lazy or it could simply be to show that they dominated the jews show their power over them now jesus was clearly referring to this roman law when he says if someone forces you to go one mile go with him too now the jews hated this law and the oppressive romans by the way the romans did not deserve it they did not deserve to be served that's what a jew thought it was inhuman on their part to force something on the jew who was just walking or was was on the road now jesus told his disciples gathered to walk that extra mile now walking the extra mile is not about physical walking that a jew was forced according to the law when jesus says go an extra mile to his disciples it is not a movement from one place to another place from one point to another point a mile remember the sermon on the mount that includes the beatitudes other to be attitudes what christ wants us to be as his disciples so the second mile represents a much higher law law of kindness law of generosity law of love therefore it is not merely the movement of the body walking it is the movement of the heart and mind movement from anger and revenge to love forgiveness and service Jesus wants us his disciples to have a completely different attitude than the people of the world. Jesus wants us his disciples to be examples of kindness and love, mercy and grace even in the face of injustice and cruelty and that's very demanding. The second thing about the extra mile is that the second mile means living above the norm, above the law of the time. treating people with kindness and respect even when they do not deserve a jew could walk a mile but would not have respect would not be an act of kindness he would just do it for the sake of doing it and he would do it to the letter of the law if he had to walk a mile he would walk exactly a mile not a step more than that but when the lord asks us to walk an extra mile it is going above the law more than the law to respond with kindness and respect the third thing about the extra mile is that the second mile is not based on our emotions and feelings it is a choice we choose to act out of love and not out of anger hatred and revenge and finally the second mile is a movement from being a victim to a victor a jew who was forced to carry that 40 50 kg of backpack armor who would feel like a victim and he would carry it like a victim but we are invited to go beyond the obligation of law so the second mile becomes an opportunity for us instead of an obligation just to carry it is an opportunity for us to change the heart and the mind of the other person to influence the oppressor Dear brethren, the Lord invites us to a very radical way of life. These are radical love commands. Imagine practicing this in our homes, in our relationships, because relationships relationships can flourish in the extra mile. My marriage will flourish. My family life will flourish if we practice the extra mile. just imagine dear friends dear brethren will a marriage fall apart if the husband and wife begin to practice this walking an extra mile for the other imagine 
Will a family fall apart if the members walk the extra mile for one another? Only those who live by love will be able to walk the extra mile and not those who live by law. So during this Holy Eucharist, let us pray to the Lord to give us the grace to walk that extra mile, to respond to the world, to evil, and even to our enemies with love. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness you have received the bread we offer you. Fruit of the earth and work of human hands, it will become for us the bread of life. Blessed, Blessed be God, God forever. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you. Fruit of the wine and work of human hands, it will become our spiritual drink. Blessed, Blessed be God, God forever. Pray to your brethren that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. O God, who in the offerings presented here provide for the twofold needs of human nature, nourishing us with food and renewing us with your sacrament, grant, we pray, that the sustenance they provide may not fail us in body or in spirit, through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation. Always and everywhere to give you thanks, Father most holy, through your beloved Son, Jesus Christ, your word through whom you made all things whom you sent as our Saviour and Redeemer, incarnate by the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin, fulfilling your will and gaining for you a holy people. He stretched out his hands as he endured his passion, so as to break the bonds of death and manifest the resurrection. And so with the angels and all the saints, we declare your glory as with one voice we acclaim. Holy, 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 holy Lord, Lord God, God of hosts, Heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy the furthest gifts, we pray, by sending down your spirit upon them like the dew fall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion. He took bread and gave you thanks. He broke it, gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of a new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith, we proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. 
Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity together with Francis, our Pope, Philip Neri, our Bishop, and all the clergy, religious and faithful. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Saint Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and we praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to pray. Our, Our Father, Father, who art in heaven, heaven hallowed, hallowed be thy, thy name. name. Thy, thy kingdom, kingdom come, thy will, will be done, be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Saviour, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us offer each other the sign of peace. Peace be with you. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Once you come into our hearts, that we might go back to the world to walk that extra mile with love in our hearts and minds. Blessed are we who are called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, Lord I am not worthy that, that you should enter, enter under, under my roof, roof but, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed.
give you my soul. I live for you alone. Every step that I take, every moment I'm away. Lord, have your way in me. There is one thing I ask of the Lord. Only this do I seek. To live in the house of the Lord all the days of my life. Let us pray. As this reception of your Holy Communion, O Lord, foreshadows the union of the faithful in you, so may it bring about unity in your church through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you and with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go forth. The Mass is ended to love and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God.